Hi friends, welcome to the last reread of the Akatar series. Today we start A Court of Frost and Starlight. This is so short that I'm gonna do a physical read. There's like no shot that I can audiobook this because I would literally audiobook it in one sitting and then I'd come back to you and be like, okay guys, I'm done and the video will be like two minutes. We're gonna read this physically. We're gonna annotate. I'm gonna pick out tab colors. It's gonna be a good time. What I'm looking forward to is the last time A Court of Silver Flames had not been announced yet. I'm interested to see how this sets up A Court of Silver Flames because I hadn't known about it at the time. So like when I read this originally, it kind of just felt like them Christmas shopping. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing how that changes with this reread. So let's pick some tab colors and get started because I'm really excited for this one. I'm hoping I can get this hair out of my mouth and read this this weekend. So hopefully it's like no more than a couple days. You cannot look at me and tell me that the new covers hold a candle to how gorgeous these are. Like, are you kidding me? Why did they have to redo the covers? <laughs> It's a while later. I actually ended up going to work at my house and I painted and there's paint all over my hands. Um, and then I came back and showered and then I had a migraine. So I'm just now getting to the book. It's now past six in the evening. I've decided that I'm gonna do like chapter by chapter-ish updates on this just because it's such a short book that I wanna make sure I have enough content for this video. And what I wanna start off by saying is I love Sarah J Mass's writing. We didn't really get to talk about this much in previous books because of how I read it, but in the first chapter she's talking about how Feyre sent a message down the bond and then Reese responded down the bond, but it was a lot later and he's talking about how he's at Devlin's camp. The sentence that really got me about just like how beautifully it was worded was this one. It says, Reese's amusement rippled toward me, caressing my innermost self with night-veiled hands. That sounds so pretty. Like, that's just such a pretty sentence. Anyways, that's the conclusion of chapter one. Basically, she's just talking about post-war, what life looks like, and the dynamic between her family and friends. So, I really remember nothing of this plot line. So, she's prepping for winter solstice, which is basically like their winter holiday. Ooh, the next chapter is in Reese's perspective. I'll catch y'all later. I almost forgot to update for chapter two because I got so caught up in my wintry ASMR ambiance that I just kept reading. So chapter two is Reese's perspective. We get a little bit from him about the conversations he's having with Cassian and the effects that the war had on some of the politics of the Illyrians. And overall an unassuming chapter, but chapter three is the first chapter we get with Cassian's perspective, I think. So it'll be interesting to see this. I don't know how I never picked up on Cassian and Nesta in the previous books because it's so obvious. When I say the previous books, I definitely meant like the first time I read them. Regardless, I never picked up on it. It's very obvious in my reread. So I'm really looking forward to that book because their personalities are very interesting. So I can't wait to get to that. But it's gonna be so long before I get to get to that. Because I think I'm going to end up reading all of my mystery thrillers for October before I do it. What is this hair? What is this paint? So if I can read 115 pages tonight, I'll be halfway. And I can read the other 115 tomorrow. That sounds good. Let's do that. I just finished chapter 5 and I just love Feyre and Reese's banter. I love when they talk to each other. Their dynamic goes so well together. I'm just obsessed with them as a couple. I just love their pairing if you will. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. I am now on page 135. It's 11.40 so I have to be a little bit quieter. So maybe I'll bring you a little closer. I have tapped this way more than I anticipated doing it. The character dynamics in this are very interesting. The plot line is a lot more to what I remember it being. It's setting itself up for the future political plot points that we'll have, I assume, in future books, um, but also reflecting on the ones that we had in the past three. The characters' growth and showing how they're going to start behaving in future books, some connections that are going to form, things like that. So I'm really enjoying it. 
Favorite just bought the tapestry at the Weaver shop and I loved that scene so much. I just like, I tapped it like four times. I'll show you all my tabs here in a second, but yeah, I'm just really enjoying this way more than I anticipated doing it. This is probably gonna be my last update for the night. I'll show you my tabs and I'll probably go to bed once I finish the chapter I'm on. So I woke up this morning and immediately began reading and now all of a sudden I'm on chapter 23. Them opening the presents was a lot shorter than I remember it being in terms of like the overall book. I don't remember Nesta and Cassian's argument so that was really interesting to like see their dynamic. I just I am so curious how Court of Silver Flames is gonna shape out between the two of them and yeah this book is just really good. For a novella it just I don't know it, it feels fun. It feels enjoyable to be back with these characters and seeing the effects that the previous books have had on them and seeing the plot set up for the next books so I'm gonna keep reading. I'll probably update you when I'm done because I'm only about 20-30 pages from the end. <laughs> I'll catch you in a bit.